Hi, this is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. Your time communing with God and letting God speak to you as you open your heart to Him. We are in the second installment of our series, The Power of Small, and it's titled, Better. Why do you become better? Why is small better? You'll know about it as you hear God's Word today. How many of you believe that this place is a place of miracles, everybody? You believe that? I believe that. Even when we have problems, amen? How many of you, you had a tough week last week? You raise your hand, you had a tough week? Yeah, wonderful. How many of you believe that because you came here, this week will be so much better? Because you have more faith, you have more peace, you have more love, you have more joy, more power. How many of you have come for the first time? Can I see a raise of hands? Want to welcome you. God bless you. Welcome, welcome. This is your home, your family now. After the feast, please go to the lobby. We'll give you a welcome gift. I'd like to greet all those watching by television and video all over the world. God bless you. God speak to you in a very special way today. And you know what? Um, I was eating in a restaurant one time. A man came up to me he said brother Bo just want to thank you so much and I, I know I'm bothering your meal but I just want to say thank you he shared his story three years ago he said he attended the feast not even this one he attended one one other feast that I, I forget now and and he said three years ago when he entered the feast he was a broken man he had he was buried in debt he had no direction in life but he just kept on attending, kept on attending, kept on attending. Three years later, he was telling me, he said, Brother Bo, I'm now married. My marriage is strong. My career is blessed. I just got promoted twice last year. And get this, he said, I'm out of debt. I'm free. And, and uh, he said, I, I follow your books. I'm investing in the stock market. And, and, you know, I thank God for all the miracles that has happened in my life. And I told him this, I said, I did not cause your miracles. I was just a guy, you know, the feast builders, we, we're, we're just the guys who give suggestions. But you took them seriously. And friends, today is the feast. And you're going to have a choice. You're going to be sitting there on those chairs and you could just tell yourself, nice suggestions, Brother Bo. Or you could say, I'm hearing the Word of God. And I'm allowing the Word to create miracles in my life. You understand that? And I, I, want you, I want you to believe this with all my heart, that miracles are coming in your life if you allow the Word to bless you. Do I hear a loud amen? So if you're ready, let's do it together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's... So I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We're smack in the middle of our series, The Power of Small. And I'm going to be talking about better. That's the title of my message. And my one big message for you is your anointing is enough. Everybody say that with me. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 38 to 39, we read the story of how David was about to fight Goliath. And King Saul doubted his ability to win that battle. David was small, David was thin, David was young. Goliath was a warrior, grizzled, you know, huge, eight feet tall probably and so what Saul did was he gave his armor his sword his helmet to the little David and this is what happened then Saul 
dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Everybody say, so he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Put your hand over your chest. Everybody say, Jesus, speak to me. I'm going to allow your word to change me, to transform me, to make me more like Jesus, and to bless me with miracles. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand and love Him. Love Him today. Love Him today. Amen. Your anointing is enough. Everybody say that with me. Our problem is this. We, we like belittling our own gifting, our own anointing. And, and we like looking over our shoulder and looking at the other person's gifting, the other person's blessing, the other person's anointing, and we say, that's better than mine. Oh, oh, that, that, that person is better than mine, you know. You have a gift. God has anointed you with something. And, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, He can bless it even more and develop it even more. Some of you are good in teaching. Some of you are good with numbers. Some of you are good in selling stuff. Some of you are good in fixing things. Some of you are good in putting meals on the table. Some of you are good in so many other things. And you need to celebrate it. You need to accept it. You need to embrace it. You need to develop it. You need to deliver it. You need to use it for the glory of God and for the blessing of nations. You've, you've, you've got to embrace it, but no, we don't. We, we like looking and we're saying, oh, I've got a confession to make. I do that too. Every week, I, I'm surrounded by fantastic singers, yes? And, 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 and the feast builders, many of them, many of them sing so well, world class. And, you know, and then there's me. Last month, I brought the feast builders to a little R&R &R in Bohol. And this, this was one night when we wanted to chill. And we, we went to this, you know, we, we were all seated like that, all, all of us, and we were eating dinner. And then in, on the stage were professional singers. And then after singing a few songs, these singers made the grand mistake of saying, who wants to sing? <laughs> That's it. They stopped. They couldn't sing anymore. Because all the, all the brothers, they, they said, you know, they, they went on stage one after another. You know, the greatest singers, you know, George Gabriel and Alvin Barcelona and Migs Ramirez, you know. And, and then there was me. And, I, and they, everybody wanted me to sing. And what, what, what can I sing? You know, every party they want me to sing. You know, of course, you're Bo. Come on, sing. And what do I sing? So I end up singing. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. That's I'm not a singer. And so sometimes I say, Lord God, why didn't you make me sing? You know, we have, have that great voice, you know, like this guy and that guy. And God, and God tells me, no, I anointed you with something else. And you've got to be comfortable with that. You've, tell somebody beside you, you've got to be you. You've got to be you. I, I will be a terrible someone else. Yes or no? I will be a terrible someone else, but I will be a fantastic me. I've, I've got to be me. I've got, I've got to know my anointing. And, and, and the problem is this. I, I want to share it with you. Um, there, there are people, there will be king souls in your life who will look down at your anointing. The anointing of David was a slingshot. Yes? It was a slingshot. But King Saul looked down at the slingshot and said, no, you, you need more. 
that's not enough. Your anointing is not enough. Here, here's my armor. Here's my sword. Here, here's, here's my helmet, you know? And, and David started wearing that and saying, you know what? I don't think I can defeat anybody here. I, ca I can't defeat a cockroach even. I mean, I can't even move. What are you talking about? You know, and, and you, but, but that's, that's precisely what happens when the King Saul's in your life will look down on your anointing. They will say, you're not enough. Your anointing is not enough. You cannot win the battle. I remember one time I was, I was with this priest and, and he said, Brother Boy, I sometimes listen to your talks on TV. And every time I listen to you, I ask myself, when will Bo give real meat to his listeners? And then he said, you know, Bo, don't be offended by this, but you've been giving cotton candy to your people. And I said, what do you mean, Father? He said, when will you teach solid doctrine like the sacraments or the Holy Trinity or, or the Holy Magisterium of the Catholic Church? You know? And, and I smiled at him and I said, Father, I said this. I was like David rejecting the armor of King Saul and holding and clutching onto his slingshot. I said, Father, that's your role. Yes? You've got theology under your belt. I mean, I, I've got theology under my belt too, but you've got more. That's your role. We need you to teach doctrine. Me, I'm a simple guy. I'm married. I've got two boys. I'm an entrepreneur. And so I teach people how to love God every day as a husband, a father, an entrepreneur. That's me. That's my role. That's my anointing. And, but he, 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 he looked down at me. He looked down at what I was doing. He said, you're teaching cotton candy. My anointing is better. I'm teaching doctrine. Not understanding that the body of Christ needs two kinds of teaching. Yes or no? The body of Christ needs His doctrine. And my practical, simple way of, 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 of you know, following God in, as in the world. Because that's who I am. I'm in the world, but not of the world. I'm, am I preaching to somebody here? That you need to say there will be people in your life who will be looking down at you and, and looking down at your gifts and looking down. If, friends, if there are giants in your life, if there are battles that you have to face and you've not been able to defeat your giants, one reason, because you've been doubting your anointing, because you've been, you've been disbelieving your anointing, because... Some of you, you don't even know your anointing. Am I speaking to somebody? Young people come up to me all the time. Brother Bo, can you help me find my anointing? Find my calling. Find, you know, what God wants me to do. Find, can, 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 can you please help me? And the way I answer them is I bring back David. And I said, how did David know his anointing? Why did he have the ability to say, King Saul, no thank you, thank you, but no thank you. Here's your armor, here's your sword. I'm going to hold on to my anointing, the slingshot. Why did he know his anointing? Ask me why. How? 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 I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how. He looked back at his past and he looked at all the wins. He lined up all the wins in his life. Are you with me on this? And then he looked for what's common in all those wins. I'm going to read you scripture. And this is what I meant. Say, I'm listening. 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 35 says, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. Listen to this. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. He looked at all the winds of his past, all the successes of his past. Look at what's common. What was common was a slingshot. Friends, look at all your wins and look at what's common and you'll find your anointing. If there is an older person that is still asking, what is my anointing? My word to you is this. Are you listening to me? See, very few people said yes because they don't want to say that they're old. If you're an older person, Asking still that question, what is my anointing? I'm going to tell you. What's stopping you from knowing your anointing is not ignorance. It's fear. 
If you're a young person, if you're a young person asking the question, what is my anointing? Are you young? And you're asking, what is my anointing, Brother Bo? I'll tell you what to do. Are you ready? Fight some lions. Grab someone's hand and say, fight some lions. David fought some lions and he found out his anointing. You cannot find your anointing without fighting some lions. Without stepping out of your comfort zone. Without entering into your courage zone. Because all anointing is found in your courage zone. Are you with me on that? When an older person says, what is my anointing? His problem is not ignorance. His problem is fear. Fear has prevented him from getting into inconvenience. From getting it. He wants everything easy. The reason why you still haven't discovered your anointing is because you have remained in your comfort zone. You want everything safe. You want everything, you want a place where you don't ruffle feathers and you don't stand out and you don't stick your neck out. No, you, if you want to discover your anointing, you've got to be uncomfortable and you've got to be inconvenient and you've got to go to a place where you've never done stuff. You cannot expect new things, things you've never experienced before if you don't do things you've never done before. Am I speaking to somebody in this room? Yes. Discover your anointing by fighting some lions. And then you'll understand that this is the gift that God has given to you. How can you say, God did not anoint me? God, God, God did not give me anything special. How could you say that if you've not done stuff? But you've got to get out and do stuff. Stuff you've never done before. We are addicted to easy. Yes or no? I want you to hold someone's hand again. Crush some bones, please. Let the blood spurt out of the fingernails. Really grip it hard. Look at the person in the eye and say this with me. Everybody say, do something scary every day. Because that's the only way. Do you think it was scary for me to stand on stage the first time I did it? You bet. Do you think it was scary for me to write my first book? You bet. Do you think it was, a, it was scary for me to build a business, the first business I built? You bet. You, you have to do something scary every day. And then that's the only way you discover your anointing. Two kinds of failures that will prevent you from knowing your anointing. Number one, fear of failure. I've discussed that already. But here's a second fear that you've got to understand. Fear of success. As much as what people, people say, you know, I like success, I want to have success, they're, they're afraid of it. They're afraid of it because mediocrity is familiar. And they've been living with mediocrity all their life. And, and that's why they're afraid of success. And mediocrity is like that pillow of little Junior. You know that favorite pillow of Junior? That, that favorite pillar, pillow that, that smells like a decomposing rat? That mother says, Junior, let's throw it away. Please, I'll give you a new one. And Junior says, no, he's my friend. His name is Poo Poo. <laughs> and mother says, it smells like Poo Poo. Let's throw it away. No, no, no. You know why no? Because it's comfortable. Mediocrity is comfortable. Your problems can become comfortable because it's familiar. But today I'm going to ask you this question. Do you believe that God has a plan for your life? And do you believe that God wants to bless you to bless other people far more than what is happening in your life right now? Then discover your anointing because God has anointed you for something special and something big, and something so powerful and so explosive, your mind will, will rock and, and, and you'll wonder, why have I just been here in my place of easy? Let me close this. I'll close this because there's another preacher coming and he's, he's special and I want you to be blessed by him. But let me close by saying that Imagine David was in that desert, in that wilderness, and he was taking care of some sheep, and it was pitch black darkness except for a few, you know, shining stars, and he had a, holding a staff. He, he was a teenager. You know, David was a teenager, shepherd boy, looking at all the sh sheep, and sheep were sleeping except him. David was just looking around, and he hears the growling sound from afar. And then he looked and he searched, and lo and behold, two 
white eyes and he saw a lion. He sees a lion and the lion is ready to pounce on one of the sheep. Now, young David over here, lion, he had a choice, yes or no? He could have made a decision and say, whoops, lion, okay, bye, go home. Daddy, we lost the sheep. Yeah, lion. <laughs> Beyond my pay scale, not in my job description. Did David do that? No, he fought the lion. And when he fought the lion, he discovered his anointing. The lion that, that came into his life was not a punishment from God. It was God preparing him for bigger things. And right now, you may be going through some lions in your life in the form of trials and problems and challenges. And sometimes you think, God, why are you doing this to me? I thought you liked me. Look at me. I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm weighed down by so many trials. The lions are there not to punish you. The lions are there to prepare you for bigger things. Don't run away from your lions. Face them. Move towards the roar. Move towards what is dangerous. Move towards that which is scary. Because your anointing is enough. I pray that you are enjoying this message. I pray that God it continues to speak to you today. I'm going to call on another preacher. It's my privilege to bring him here on stage. He is the feast builder in the Laguna area. He's leading two or three feasts there in Santa Rosa. And if, you're, if you live there, I hope you, you, you approach him later on and tell him that you want to serve with him because we need servants and leaders in that area. He wrote a book, Job Success 101. And if you are looking for a book that will guide you and to have a better, better life as a, as a leader, professor, a pro, a prof, in your profession or in your career, uh, get that book in the lobby. Please welcome, the video will be shown about him. Please welcome John Escoto. When to confront the lions, that's what Brother Bo said this morning. And we're scared of lions. Ang hindi lang ko takot sa lion na yung tiger. Tanongin niyo ko bakit? Kasi nung nagkita sila, sabi ng tiger sa lion, hmm, lion? Buti na lang God sends lions to our lives and then after the lion experience, we see all the more clearly. Because again, when lions would ham on in from every side, our vision gets clouded. And we don't see the beauty of God right before us. Nasisira ang mata. Alam mo, Brad, yung mata mo, attractive siya. Bakit? Crush mo ba? Hindi attractive, they attract each other. And thank God He allows lions and our visions would clear. And more than the lions, he sends other things. Everything starts with the letter L. Three L's. Ilang L? The first is lions. Sabay sabay sabihin lions. Number two, little voices. And number three, lesser people. Lions. Star, sprinter, 
and long jumper, her name is Vonetta Flowers of the University of Alabama. He dreamt of becoming an Olympic champion ever since she learned how to breathe. And she believed in her heart that God planted the dream. And of course, she tried out to the, national, to the U.S. national track and field team. And she actually did great. Just a millisecond and a small fraction of an inch short of qualifying for the team. She failed. And that shattered her, a huge lion in, in, in her life. And what consoled her actually was the thought that maybe there's always next time. And she devoted all her life to four years of long preparation. Because it takes four years for Olympics to come. He had, she had unquestionable dedication to training and hard work. And again, she tried out. But she didn't make it again. She didn't make the cut again. She was just a few milliseconds and a fraction of an inch short to making it again. And she said, Lord, I thought that you never fail someone. And this time she knew the time is not on her side and she's not getting any younger. And preparing for another four years may no longer be good for her. How could she ever compete, she said, with, with younger legs and fresher springs. And, I, and she said, I guess this is it. This is the story of me. The botched story of me. Still depressed, she decided to swing by the old gym. And she saw a rather unusual and funny announcement. It said... Continue your Olympic dream by trying out for the bobsled team. What in heaven's name is bobsled, she thought. So she made a research for herself, at ang nalaman niya, that for you to be good in bobsled, you've got to be a great sprinter. You've got to be a great long jumper. And she's great at both. For 17 years, She's been practicing. I'm good at this, she said. She tried out. In long story short, she topped the U.S. team qualifier. 2002 Winter Olympics. Long story short, she won the gold medal for bobsled. The first African-American woman to win a gold medal in the Winter Olympics. Pakitapik ang friend sa kanan, repeat after me, sabihin mo, friend, God is not punishing you. She's, he's preparing you. Sa kaliwa naman, sabihin mo, friend, friend a God, di ba pwedeng huy muna? Together with the lions, he sends the other elves, little voices. God gives us the power of the small. And this is what the entire series is all about. One of the movies I like always is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Have you seen this? Narnia? Okay. May nagtanong sa akin, Brother John, yung bang Narnia yung female superhero na Pinoy, Narnia! <laughs> Ngongo pala yung nagtanong sa akin. Read about the stories that they get to be invited to go through a small hole, a small door in the wardrobe, and then it opens up into an entire new world, a big world, a world of power and magic. Surprises come in small packages. Diba ano? Even in the small friends that we have, they surprise us. May barkada po kami unano. At ang sabi niya, alam mo Brad, sabihin mo na ang gusto mong sabihin, ha? Huwag ka lang mangungutang sa akin. Sabi ko, bakit naman pare? Kasi sabi niya, alam mo, short ako ngayon eh. God speaks in a small voice and many times we actually miss it because the louder voice around are the naysayers. They're saying you did a bad thing, you're not cool, but 
for, for the 11-year-old boy. This is his story. He's very talented. He's very creative. And all the students around loved him so much. But people around him, even the teachers, would say he could easily be distracted. And at the end of the semester, of course, as usual, as usual the, the book reports are due. And like a normal student, of course, cramming, he didn't do the work. And last minute, the day before, that was the only time he had to go to the library and, and find the book. And of course, he didn't have time to read the entire book. The next day in the class, booting along oral book report. And he went, when he was right there in front of the class, he had to make up a story. And he began to tell the most beautiful story that everybody was hearing. It was filled with all kinds of details, with the twists and the turns. And the teacher and the students were hanging at the edge of their seats, listening intently with amazement at everything he was saying at that time. And naturally, the next day when he received his grade, it said A+. Plus. But underneath the huge A+, plus, was a note from the teacher that said, I have read the book that you have reported on yesterday, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the story that you talked about yesterday. But boy, you are a fantastic storyteller. You have an amazing gift. You will do something incredible with your life. And that young boy, for the first time in his life, because he has never been told that he's good, all he's been told is that you're not focused, you're not disciplined, and you were not amount to anything. And for the first time in his life, something was ignited on the inside of him. And he grew up to be a man who's so successful. And what he does now is he writes stories for movies for a living. Now on the top of his game in Hollywood, always crediting his teacher for the small voice. That instead of chewing him out and seeing everything that he was doing wrong, the teacher saw the good and the greatest in them, in him. And, and the teacher called out, the greatness, the seed of greatness in him. Now I understand. Tanungin niyo ko ang alin ulit. Now I understand. Ayan. Nung sinabi pala ni Jesus, when he was talking to the disciples and he was calling them, when they were all still messed up and undisciplined and, and sinful, he approached them and he said, I will make you fishers of men. And he spoke to Peter when Peter was still all messed up, when he was still betraying people. Alam niyo ba na that was the first time na nasulat sa Biblia na may telepono? Tanungin niyo ako bakit? Eh kasi may denial si Peter. Luma na yun. <laughs> Sabi niya, Simon, you are Peter. And on this rock, you will do greater things. Can everybody look at me here? You have to remember what I'll say. Are you ready for this? I sabi niyo sabay sabay, I'm ready, handsome. Yung lakas ng tawa. Tandaan mo ang sasabihin ko sa'yo. Ready? Marami kang alam. Hindi mo lang alam. Eh, totoo. Ang gulo niyan, pero totoo yan. Marami kang alam. Hindi mo lang alam. Oh, please, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not your usual motivational speaker. I'm much more than that. I, uh, I do much more. I'm a Jesus freak. I know that it's always a blessing to know your anointing. And you, you'll have a glimpse of your anointing. We always teach that here at the feast. You answer two questions. Who are you? And then the second question you answer, what do you do? And then it gets you closer to your anointing. But I want to drive you on 
to the even greater blessing that brings you from happiness to joy, from success to significance. And it will be answering the questions further on, who do you do this for? Who do you do this for? And what have been the effects on them? Boy, if you were able to answer this question and you were able to get a solid answer, you're headed for joy. May nag-usap dati, tinanong siya, alarm clock ka ba? Kasi ikaw ang una kong gustong patayin paggising ko. What awakens you in the morning to put to work your anointing? It's amazing what God can do in a person's life. It's amazing what God can do to a person that is saying yes to Him. And I pray that you continue to say yes to God today. God in His mercy speaks to us about the third L, lesser people. There are lesser people not, people not because of their lesser humanity. There are lesser people not because of their lesser, lesser dignity. No! There are lesser people, people because you have more and you can give and share with them. And this will be the fullness of your anointing. Joy happens when you give, and we always say that here. Psalm 72 is the Psalms for the anointed one. If you would read through the scriptures, it tells us why the anointed one was anointed. Why was he anointed? For whom was he anointed? What is he anointed for? Psalms 72 verse 12 to 13. All together, please, let's read it. For he rescues the poor when they cry out, the oppressed who have no one to help. He shows pity to the needy and the poor and saves the lives of the poor. This will be my last story. May we all stand in place. Cecilio is his name. And he heads a company named Aluminum Container Incorporated. Major supplier for collapsible aluminum toothpaste tubes. Formerly used, of course, by local manufacturers. Colgate Palmolive, Procter & Gamble, Philippine Refining Company now, Unilever, However, technological innovations prompted the multinational companies to use plastic laminated tubes as an alternative. And as a result, Cecilius Aluminum Factory had to close shop in 1985. The lion came and it pounced on him. And again, the voices around are loud. The headlines read, end of the line for you. No hope for him. But hey, being a devout Christian, Cecilia knew something. He knew that when you're down with nothing, God is up to something. And he sought for the silent and little voice. And he continued working and and. And the, the lion didn't stop him and he started exploring other options. And the little voice said, Kung ayaw nila ng tubes mo, di ikaw ang maglagay ng toothpaste sa loob. And that's what he did. Cecilio decided to compete with the big boys of the market, producing locally made toothpastes. And they hit him Sorry, he hits them where it hurts most at the selling price. He founded the Lamoyan Corporation, manufacturer of the first locally made toothpastes. 
happy in Kutitap. Sold in the Philippine market at a 50% price lower than all the others. Then it was not, he was not yet done. He, he came up with another idea, with another innovation that gave him further edge from others in the local scene. He developed the multi flavored toothpastes for children. Came the brightly packaged tubes, boxes adorned with Sesame Street characters. Today, the market for the budget friendly toothpastes expanded to the neighboring countries in China. Vietnam and Indonesia and he was reaping success but hey I'm not yet done with my story we're not in the best part yet didn't I tell you that he is a devout Christian a Christian businessman to be more specific he asked the question further on he asked who do I do this for and what have been the effects on them then he remembers the lesser people months from there on the company was lauded for having the most outstanding program for equal employment opportunity providing work opportunities to whom tanongin niyo ko kanino to the country's hearing impaired community members. Lamoyan's employment program included free housing for more than 30 deaf mute staff. And in fact, if you would be promoted to a manager in the company, you are actually required to learn sign language as a means of communicating with the hearing impaired staff. And since the founding of the Lamoyan Corporation, there have been 180 deaf-mute students received, who received a free college education through the DEAF, DEAF, which means Deaf Evangelistic Alliance Foundation, founded and chaired by Cecilio K. Pedro. It has been officially recognized by the Dep Ed, and Cecilio K. Pedro was awarded the honorary doctor for of philosophy in technological management in recognition for his corporate and social achievements. And Dr. Pedro ingrained, ingrained his own belief in the company's motto, which cascaded down to the very DNA of all the people here. The motto that said, making a difference for the glory of God. What is your anointing? Who do you do these for? Who are your poor? Whom are you serving with your anointing? My friend, God is serious about your anointing. When lions come, He is not punishing you. God has planted an anointing in you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, it says there long before time ever began and long before history started on, long before the foundations of the world were laid, God already chose you and appointed you and anointed you. You have a special assignment and your anointing is enough. You don't borrow from anyone and it is well that you know this anointing. He allows the lions. He sends the little voices. And He 
sense of little people too. The power of little things. More than finding your anointing, you will find your joy. Sons of faith, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace. Everlasting, your light will shine when all worlds fade. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all things. Once again, brothers and sisters, I'll lift up our hands as we all imagine Jesus Christ, the ever merciful God, here in front of us as we sing to Him. The will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing my sin in bringing you grace. My last day, your light will shine in all. difficult to to describe or explain to others because you feel that you're all alone and it's so dark where you are 
I want to tell you now that what you're going through is not God's punishment. It is God's preparation for something bigger. I speak God's word to you. The best is yet to come. That God has a future in store for you. Do not give up. Hold on to God. Bring out your Navina to God's love. It's, if it's with you in your wallet or in your phone. If you didn't bring it with you, that's fine. Lift up all the dreams in your heart. Lift up your hands like this. It's a symbol that you're going to receive all His love and all His miracles and all His blessing and all His healing. And just say this after me. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit, the power of Pentecost. Right now in my heart, you work in me. You are blessing me. And I believe the best is yet to come. That whatever I'm going through is but preparation for my victory. And I declare my dreams will come true. Sometimes I need to pinch myself because I get this emails and, and feedback from people who watch the show and they tell me how their lives are changing. Listen, I don't want you just to remain a spectator. I want you to really be part of our ministry. Here's the thing. If you will give any amount whatsoever to support this ministry, I want to send this to you. This is the first message on our series, The Power of Small. It has blessed a lot of people. I want it to bless you. And for a gift of 2,000 pesos to this ministry, I'm not only give you one, but I'm going to give you the whole set of our series, The Power of Small, four messages in DVD. It will bless you and your family. I want to send this to your home. Plus, you know, I want to send you also my book, Life Manual 101, How to Make Your Dreams Come True. Uh, this will enrich your life uh, in an unmistakable way and I really want to send this over to you again for, for a gift of 2,000 pesos or more so that we can continue to broadcast God's word and God's love to spiritually hungry people all over the world. Um, the contact details are on, this, on the screen and we'd love to hear from you. I'll be waiting for you. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life.